last but not least, I give you Daniel Jasper, who is doing something for your sanity, and uh, by introducing you to Clang Tidy. So, hi, I'm Daniel. Uh, I work for, um, on Chandler's actually a C++ tool, uh, team in, uh, at Google. Um, but there are two main differences between what I do and what Chandler does. Um, the one key difference is that I work out of Munich in Germany, which makes coming here much easier. Um, and also, we like channels, Chandler mostly works from like the C++ front end downwards, so actually like doing all the optimization stuff he talked about yesterday. Whereas uh, I and the team in Munich, we mostly work from the compiler upwards, so we try to build tools on top of Clang to actually make your development life easier. Um, the talk is called uh, Make the Code Sane with Clang Tidy. That's actually a bit of a lie. I figured in 10 minutes it's actually not enough time to um, do all that, so I'm just going to give a brief overview and maybe um, you can, after that, find out more about Clang Tidy and investigate what you, what you can do with it. Um, I want to introduce you to three tools that we have developed. Um, the first one is Clang Format. Has anyone heard of Clang Format? Used it? Liked it? Ah, still some hands up. Um, yeah, it turns out that, well, everybody thinks his code is like a unique, beautiful snowflake. Um, that's true for me too, um, but please don't make that through white space. Right? Client comment is good enough at handling most of the white space. It has many configure options, so you can mostly get the style you probably like, and um, not thinking about the code layout uh, makes you more effective. Um, um, then there's you complete me. Um, it's not actually written by the team in Munich, but we're probably going to maintain it. Um, it's basically well, it's a code completion tool for many languages, but for C++, it actually takes libclang. Um, keeps it in a Python server that runs behind your Vim or Emacs or um, Sublime and gives you good co uh, code completion and a few other things. It's actually, for me, it's fundamentally a game changer because I can never remember uh, APIs and stuff like that. Um, and then we have actually, oh, sorry. And we actually have Clang Tidy, sorry. Um, it's a, hmm, it's a Clang based um, lint tool. Well, it's actually not a tool, it's more of a framework. Uh, so you can use Clang, and it has full access to the AST and the preprocessor and everything, and can do very powerful checks on your software. Um, and more importantly, it can actually uh, fix the code for you in many cases. And it has checks for to improve readability, like stuff you shouldn't do, for efficiency, like for instance in, in for loops, if you do copies that you shouldn't be doing, uh, correctness, and also for modernization, so that we actually use C++, and I'm going to show a bit about that. Um, talking about all these tools is awesome, but I actually think you need to see them to appreciate what they can do for you. Uh, so I've prepared a small demo. Uh, it's not actually some competition code or anything. I just jumbled it up a bit to show Clang for to show off Clang format. Um, to start with, it can sort. So I've hooked up, this is Vim. I've hooked up Clang uh, format, and uh, you complete me to it. Uh, Clang format's just one press of a button. So for instance, it can sort includes, right? I press a button. Includes are sorted. It can format, like, what's currently under your cursor, right? So it just lays it out nicely. Um, and yeah, like if you have more complicated code, it actually gets interesting. Um, I've configured a small column limit, right? So it fits on the screen. Um, now I'm going to show you something that I actually didn't want to sh show or shouldn't sh show you. Um, it can, the tools can actually handle C++ really well, right? So don't create a macro call, don't, right? You can still format it nicely, right? Um, and if we actually also call this macro, um, then YCM, like you complete me, should also work. So for instance, here we have a vector of strings, right? And um, like these pop-ups are created by you complete me, and you see it has like the proper functions that a vector has and everything, right? Even here within the macro, it understands everything perfectly and gives you very good code completion. Okay, but. As I'm just going to undo, like, don't do this, right? No macros, unless you know what you're doing. Um, OK. Now, uh, for, for the rest of the demo, I mostly want to show what Clang Teddy can do. Um, as I mentioned, it has many, many different checks. Um, and I only want to show up the stuff that modernizes your C++ code. As you can see here, uh, this is a lot of like old like C++03 stuff that we don't want to use anymore. Um, you can call um, Clang Tidy on, on demo, but you can also just get a list of enabled checks first, right? So if I do that, I get a whole list of checks. It actually has more than that. I've restricted that list a bit. Um, and I now want to show off a few of the um, modernization checks. So for instance, 
we always want to use C11's overwrite, right? Because it prevents a lot of really bad bugs that are hard to find. Um, so we run um, client tidy on my demo CC file, and we configure uh, the checks. And in this case, I just want to use mis uh, modernize use overwrite. Uh, oh, I've enabled all the checks. So first, I need to disable all checks and then enable use overwrite. And you, as you can see, it, it's not hooked up to Vim yet. We're going to work on that. Um, but it basically tells me that in line 11, which is probably here, uh, I should add an overwrite. Um, being told to add an overwrite is really nice, but why should I have to do that, right? Instead, I just want to call it with dash fix. And you can see it has applied one fix it. And as you can see, like the overwrite was added here, right? Um, well, adding overwrite everywhere is nice, and we use that a lot. Uh, we've converted maybe half of Google's code base to actually use overwrite where appropriate. Um, but it's not all that interesting. Um, so let's do more interesting checks. Um, if I go back to the list, uh, we have modernize use auto, right? Auto is great. We should use it in many places, especially when we have like iterators, like iterators aren't, aren't really nice to look at. Um, so let's do, maybe without fix first, let's use auto here. Like, as you can see, it, it tells you use auto when declaring iterators, right? because it's usually a good thing. Again, uh, and also um, use auto when initializing with new to avoid duplicate type names, right? Because usually, like, I mean, if it's just foo, it doesn't make a lot of different difference, but if it's a huge template thing, you don't want to defi define it twice. Uh, again, we call it with dash fix, and it has applied a lot of fixes, and you can see that the code now has like auto in it a lot. Uh, converted everything here, converted the auto here. Now, code is messed up. Um, I just select everything and, and format it again, right? So I don't have to deal with the, the white space stuff. Um, maybe one other thing we can introduce. So, um, save that, um, is the, if I go back to the list of checks, and that's actually like the one that I find most amazing, is the modernized loop convert. Um, as, it, as you can imagine, it converts loops to range-based for loops. Um, and that one is actually a bit trickier than like some of the other stuff I've, so, oh, I've shown. Um, again, you call it and tells you use range-based for loops here, here, and here. Um, and if I call actual fix, then we can look at the results a bit more because they're actually interesting. Um, you can see it has shortened everything here. Again, like, I don't know whether you like the point. Like, it doesn't know whether they, you, know, you like the reference with the name or, or the, the, the type. It's a big debate, at least within Google. Uh, so I just format it again with the format settings, and at least I have a consistent result. Um, so now the, the interesting thing here is it, uh, maybe I should undo. It has actually chosen names, right? So as you can see here, we have an iterator that we just access, right? Um, I'm just undoing it, redoing now. Um, and it actually has chosen a name, right? So it, it understands that this is a plural, although we're not very smart about it, right? So you can confuse it. But it has chosen name, right? Which is convenient. Like, I mean, all these tools are about getting the 90, 90 or 99% case right. And cleaning up the other 1% is not too bad. At least you don't have to do like, the vast chunk of the work. Um, the other case is a bit more intricate here. Intricate, we actually have an iterator and take a, a variable from that. And, and um, if I redo, you can see that it actually has moved that variable into the for loop, right? So it then knows what name you want for, for this thing. Um, similarly, here, this case is a bit more interesting uh, because it's, it's an array that has like a, a, a size defined and you iterate with actual indexing and it checks that you actually don't use the index in other ways um, and, and that n is the size of the array, uh, and that sort of thing, right? So if I again redo, you can see that it has converted that to a range as well. Um, let me undo once more and save. Like if, if, and I hope I actually have not tried this. I always do stupid stuff in talks. Um, so I, if, if I do minus one here, it should not be able to do this, right? Um, so let's again uh, do kind tidy and do the fixes, and you can see it has not converted that loop. It, it, it tries to understand all the side effects that your current iteration might have. That's actually all I have prepared, um, but maybe we have some more time for questions then. Thank you.
I'm just curious if it renames something like here the for loop does it keep track if the name was already used so that it's shadowing or if it's even used inside the loop or is it then a problem that the code does something completely different? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe. Let's try. Uh, so, I, I mean, shadowing is not really a problem, right? Because then the, wor the, the loop still works if it's not otherwise used, right? So your, your question would be whether we have like an int name and then do like something with the name. Or not? Let's try. Yep, seems like that. So it just it just, just has then fallen back to just use it as the, the like the name. It's not a very clever name, but it basically has given up. Like I want to use name, I can't use name. What do I do? Does it work with a queue iteration? This queue iteration? Uh, I don't know. Yes, I but I, I don't know whether that's in a configuration file or whether you actually need to implement that for a queued iterator because the thing is that you have to recognize the concept in like as a pattern in the AST. Uh, and I don't know how exactly the QT iterators work. Uh, so I, I don't know. But it's an open source project you can com contribute. Um, shouldn't be too hard to, to adapt. Uh, so just a sort of a follow-up question. So if you have a huge code base and you run this, ideally you want to have some guarantees. And you said you run this on roughly half the code at Google. So did you make no, no, no. all your developers look through every single change or did you just trust the tool that it sort of does the right thing always or? Um, there's multiple questions in that. So no, we don't run this tool only in half of our code base, right? We run like each of these checks and migrate our code base. And I just said that we have converted about half of our code base to use override consistently. Um, we generally have like a code review culture, um, so we always need a second pair of eyes for any code change that goes in, um, and we also need somebody to review changes generated by these, right? Although sometimes people write sort of review tools based on like, gen like regular expressions and stuff to have like a second implementation that verifies that the first implementation did the right thing. There was. Uh, so the question was, uh, on which platforms does this work? Um, so Clang, from what I, I'm not aware of a platform that doesn't run on. Uh, it doesn't use that much of, of, of Clang. Uh, Clang Tidy should also run on, on like all the major platforms. I don't know uh, whether YCM, like you complete me, is available on, on Windows. Like. Okay. Can they decide to use const auto reference instead of reference, just plain reference? In some cases, just if the usage are all const, uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Like it, 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 I think it inserts const in some rare cases, but not universally yet. It's like depends. It's hard to. It's sometimes hard to derive whether all the usages are const. <laughs> 